Lowe's. As companies look to capitalize on the growth in artificial intelligence, one sector that might be poised for a turnaround is semiconductors. Yahoo Finance's Dan Halley joins us with the details. Dan, what do we need to know? That's right, Brad. We're talking specifically about Micron here. And during their uh, recent earnings call, the CEO essentially said that, look, AI proves uh, could prove to be a big boon for the semiconductor industry, specifically uh, on the memory front. Obviously, Micron is a big memory company. Uh, and so the the need for more memory chips inside of these servers, the, the vast amount of memory that's required to run these kinds of applications could help provide a boost for an industry that's ailing at this point, quite frankly. Uh, you know, we had the explosion of purchases during the pandemic and then just as we saw on the consumer side of things which you know micron also deals in people started pulling back on spending they had done all their purchasing and they didn't need necessarily need to buy on the consumer side and then on the enterprise side well interest rates started rising uh, and so they definitely wanted to pull back at that point um, not to mention inflation and so uh, we saw a, a big pullback there but now with the rise of ai this could provide a kind of you know boost uh, light a fire underneath the industry to get people to start buying. And it's not just Micron, by the way. We've seen other companies that are really kind of benefiting from this discussion around AI, specifically generative AI. NVIDIA, obviously one of the big beneficiaries, they happen to have their GTC developer conference, and that was one of the biggest announcements there was the different developments that they have going around generative AI and AI in general. And so you, know, you look at NVIDIA, one of their biggest rivals, AMD, they also provide uh, graphics chips. Uh, and then Intel as well, they have the CPUs, uh, AMD uh, as well. And just because Graphics is great at accelerating the processes. Doesn't mean they don't need CPUs to help run those servers. And Intel could be a, a beast there as well. So you know this could kind of uh, help raise all boats uh, at a time when you know the semiconductor industry is really ailing. Um, and it's interesting. I saw. I think I saw one commentary from an analyst on Intel's announcement in particular that it's like the stock went up a lot in part because things have been so bad. In other words, it's not like uh, maybe they should be enthusiastic about this announcement, but it's also all relative given kind of what's been happening in Intel, with Intel specifically and with the sector more broadly. Yeah, with, with their new chip that they had uh, uh, announced uh, coming to servers earlier than was originally expected. Yeah, that's, that's you know, kind of the same kind of discussion that, frankly, I think has been had around, around Facebook as well, or excuse me, Meta, where, you know, the, they were such beaten down stocks in the tech sector that you figure, well, I guess they have to go up again, right? And so, yeah, that's that's part of the discussion with Intel for sure. I mean, look, they, they've basically had their lunch stolen from them uh, by the schoolyard bullies. I mean, they uh, TSMC able to put together better chips, uh, more advanced chips. Uh, AMD stole market share. Uh, NVIDIA basically boxed them out of the GPU space that they, you know, fairly weren't in, but are trying to get into. Uh, and so, you know, you have to figure at some point, there's got to be good news for Intel around the corner. Uh, and this new server chip that's coming out uh, earlier than expected could be that. And don't forget, they're in the midst of a multi-billion dollar turnaround plan here where they want to be a better fabricator. They call them fab. They're building fabs uh, across the country. Um, the big facility out in Ohio. Uh, and then, you know, they're also trying to not necessarily beat TSMC as far as uh, the nanometer on chips, but the performance per watt. They're, they're talking more about performance than nanometers, but the industry focuses on nanometers, and that seems to be what a lot of Wall Street focuses on. So we'll just have to see where Intel lands at this point. But, you know, they are trying to turn things around. And, you know, I mean, you got to look, this is a, a decades old company, a stalwart in the chip space. They've got to have something up their sleeves with uh, CEO Pat Gelsinger. Dan, I was looking through the, the presentation that they had put forward in the webcast yesterday for Intel. And they had some rave reviews from AI companies like Hugging Face, which interesting name, mm -hmm. uh, Josh Wolf, who spoke with us at South by Southwest from Lux Capital, uh, he had mentioned Hugging Face. And so if he is validating that and Intel is, is validating Hugging Face, no doubt great thing for Hugging Face, but what does that mean for <laughs> Intel's play within AI? Are they a net beneficiary of this AI wave as well? Yeah, I think, frankly, any of the, the semiconductor firms will benefit from, from the wave of AI. Now, I think here's the main thing, right, is they have to make sure that it's not a fad and it's a trend, right? Generative AI is super big right now because of ChatGPT, 
blew up. Microsoft jumped on that. They were already invested in OpenAI, but they realized that they had momentum. And so they're working it across uh, their, their product portfolio. Uh, we have firms like uh, Hugging Face uh, and others that are diving in or have been in the generative AI or AI space. Uh, but generative AI is really the big popular uh, phrase right now, I would say. They have to make sure that it's not just a fad, that it's not uh, Web3 or NFTs or the metaverse, which at this point is mm -hmm. seemingly just a fad, right? I do think that you know generative AI and AI, obviously, in general, I mean, they have the benefit of having tangential, uh, I guess, benefits. I'll just use the word again, uh, because they do provide services to consumers and businesses that the other, you know, platforms don't. NFTs, Web3, Metaverse, all those kind of, you know, terms that everybody used and threw out there. Uh, AI provides you with a service that's needed. It, it speeds up different uh, processes and companies. Uh, it offers new capabilities. So I don't think it's going to be uh, considered a fad or just this sh uh, short-term burst. But you know, I think the the huge push into it as far as generative AI goes is getting a little fatty at this point, just because every other email I get is oh, generative AI, generative AI. It's like, you guys, <laughs> Sna Snapple is, uh, has, I, I wrote about this a few weeks ago, Snapple has a generative AI Snapple fax that you can get online. So it's like, okay, of course. Know, there are true, true, true purposes for this technology, and then there's Snapple. So I do think it will benefit the, the industry overall. Well, I mean, this is what would happen in the metaverse as well. So your point is really well taken. Is it a yeah. fad or is it a trend? By the way, we're going to pick up on that uh, theme a little bit later in the show when we talk to Scott Kessler. Thanks so much, Dan. Appreciate it.